mentioning the Briggs and Stratton engine assembly <laughs> and uh, the nineteen uh, set. Well, uh, I um, I've had a nineteen set. Uh, well, I've had my ham license since nineteen sixty three. So, uh, you know, you said when you were born. Well, I was born a little bit before, uh, a few years before you. So. The 19 set, uh, well, <laughs> uh, there are some guys here. There's, uh, Chris, are you three? Uh, 80 meters and 40 meters. I think it's, what it was up to 10, 11, 12 megahertz. I don't think it covered the 20 meter pad, you see. Uh, converter. Longer range stuff <laughs> back uh, back during the war, and of course those were shipped off to uh, to Wales <laughs> yeah, because uh, the ones that certainly were made in Canada had Russian lettering, and yours probably did. And uh, I have a pair of 19 set earphones. <laughs> So, uh, so I certainly know about the 19 set. From the Second War, and these things are popular, that they used. The battery there, and I had this January to say, I'm going to Never 
had an attack guy for it, you know, well, yeah. Things, but, uh, but that's what they did, you know. So I pulled up an AC power supply for the one I had, and, uh, now he had, he did ran on 12 volts, to tell you the truth. He said, for instance, uh, the, um, transmitting tubes here, was a, uh, a 16, 16, 29. That looked like an 807, about a 12 volt version of the 807. So, tell me that those things. First, uh, the innards of them and so on. Uh, you were you were up around uh, 100 volts at least uh, to uh, run the uh, tubes and so on. <laughs> uh, there was uh, a so-called variometer for antenna tuning. They had a kind of weird coaxial cable because it was uh, put in, and then there was a clip that was. Uh, Another great spot to go and hang out in too for military service equipment. Then one section for the antenna on the head. That radio, um, even on CW, I think it was MCW, it didn't run real CW. <laughs> I'm inclined to agree. Do it and make sure that uh, things are working okay. <laughs> Thank you. 